So welcome to the expat pod and welcome to the shorter quick fire questions version of the podcast. If you've not listened to the episode with Ramaya and I all about her journey to Abu Dhabi, then please do go listen to that or watch that you watch on YouTube. There'll be a link around my head now, but obviously do it after you've seen this one through. So Ramaya, this is essentially just a bit of fun. It's not nothing serious. It's just 10 quick fire questions where, you know, just answer that as you as you would answer anything really so my first question to everyone is always where is the better place you ever lived uae is amazing but i lived in ukraine for a short period of time prior to the war and i think that's my favorite country i've ever been in so i would have to give it to ukraine Oh, we didn't even touch that on the podcast, which is such a shame. But what, what, why why was that? I had a cousin that was living there with his children, and I went to stay with them for about three months. And I did a huge hiking trip through the Carpathian mountain range, and I got to explore Lviv and Novosilky and Kiev, and it was just incredible. It was so beautiful there. I learned a bit of the language and stuff too, so I got to really immerse myself in it. It was awesome. Incredible. My next question is, what's your favorite international food? That's not Canadian, anything but Canadian food, which is maybe poutine. (laughs) All right, poutine aside, I really love Japanese food. I'm a sucker for sushi. Um, I love Lebanese food. It's really good. I can always go for Lebanese food and maybe Syrian food too. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot more Lebanese uh, restaurants popping up in the UK, I've noticed, which is great because it's the food. Rightfully so, rightfully so. I've not only had Syrian food before, it's maybe not not come across as a cuisine yet, but what what dishes are there? If you think it out, it's it's incredible. It's amazing. I, I have it at least once a week. It's so, so good. Amazing. I have to try and find some. What's your favorite international tradition? International tradition? I think... I don't know if this is cheating, but I have family that is Chilean and I always love getting to celebrate Christmas with them. And we pretty much just like dance the night away. And then as soon as the clock strikes 12, when it's midnight, that's when everyone gets to sit down and open their Christmas presents. So I really like that tradition of just like dance, dance, dance. We party, we drink wine, everyone's having a good time. And then as soon as the clock strikes 12, it's like, okay, now it's now it's officially Christmas. We can celebrate that. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. I would like that to be my Christmas at some point. I have to go over the holidays. What's your favorite thing about living abroad? I think getting to meet new people, getting to explore different cultures, and just getting to learn more about the rest of the world. I think especially being in such an expat-heavy place, I'm getting to meet a whole mixed match of people. I'm always learning something new that I had never known before. So I like getting to be exposed to new things, putting myself out of my comfort zone. I guess it's a melting pot of, of lots of opportunities for you to ask loads of questions about everyone. So it's like, ooh. Yeah, I, yeah, I get to learn more about them individually and culturally and see their holidays and stuff like that. So it's always fun to explore new things like that. I'm jealous. Um, what's your best homesickness remedy? I am pretty good at keeping in touch with everyone back home. So like just doing video calls every week. I love Netflix parties, so getting to watch shows with my friends back home or watching a movie together, sharing our screens like that. And then I am a huge board game nerd, so pretty much every month I have like a virtual board game night with my friends and we'll just play games online together. So that's definitely my number one remedy. That's a pretty good thing. What, what, what's your go-to game? Oh, I really like Dominion and Settlers of Catan. Those are probably my top two. Yeah, I spoke to a colleague and he had Katan, the mobile version, and said it was really good for playing. Now he was playing yeah. with, his go- with his girlfriend whilst they were in work. And I was like, what? You can do that? Gosh, yeah, no, I love Katan. Most of my friends don't play me back home anymore because I'm too competitive. But every every once in a while, I sneak in the virtual version and I get a game or two in. I have to jump on the bandwagon and try it out. I've not tried it before. I was always a civilization I'll play person. you. We can play. Yeah, no, definitely. I'll, I'll take you up on that. I need to learn. So. Yeah. Um, what's what's the hardest thing about living abroad? I guess for me, because Canada is so far and the time difference is so vast, I feel like that's the hardest thing is sometimes time difference makes it hard to keep up with people or it's just very far away from home. So it's not like I can easily go back home. And then just the culture shock, the the expectations with work and the differences in society and how things kind of operate day to day is a bit of a challenge to get used to. Have you got into voice noting people who are living in different time zones as a way of kind of keeping up? 
That was always my remedy. I was going to send you a voice there. It's five minutes long, but you'll listen to it whilst in the shower or something, and then we can catch up that way. Yeah, I have one friend who is like my podcast friend. I think at this point, it's just like a game to see who can make the longer voice note. I think the longest we've gotten to is like 18 minutes. So my drive from work to the gym, I just hit play and just go on my way. <laughs> I noticed you can now listen to him a bit faster. So it saves a lot of time. Just hope my diction's good. What, what's the best phrase you've learned since living abroad? Obviously, you've speaking to a lot of different people from different parts of the world you might have heard some incredible phrases which ones like stand out i think a fun one that i really like is haliwali which is kind of like ah not a big deal like whatever almost like a hakuna matata kind of a feel and then the uae is very big on inshallah which is like god's willing if if it all falls into place but I feel like everybody has a different interpretation of inshallah. So it's a maybe, but really it's a no. And I use it with my students all the time. And they all roll their eyes at me for it. But I'm like, eh, inshallah, maybe we'll have early recess. We'll see. <laughs> Sorry, didn't, didn't pan out this time. That's incredible. Uh, what's, what's your best way of making new friends? My best way of making new friends is probably using Meetup. So there's lots of different meetup events for expats and it's like there's there's events for every group you could want so if i want to join the crochet group or the book club or like a movie goers group they have something for everybody and i just i just join every little community i see and just kind of sneak my way into different events so yeah i feel like every weekend i have an opportunity at least once to go out and meet new people which is awesome i used me a lot when i was living in sweden and it helped me make, make good friends I still speak to some people now from that app so yeah definitely worth doing if you're struggling um whilst living abroad and it's nice for travel too if I'm traveling I'll try and go to some meetup event or like a social event and then I usually find some sort of buddy to go for dinners with as I'm on the on the road so it's nice that's great what's what's your favorite thing to do in your new city so obviously uh Abu Dhabi being a new home what's your favorite thing to do there I am a big fan of art galleries and museums, and I love doing walking tours. It's a little hot to do walking tours in Abu Dhabi, but usually when I'm traveling, that's like one of the first things I'll do just to kind of get myself orientated, learn a little bit of history, see some like things that might not be easy to find just as a tourist, like off the beaten path. So I love going to walking tours. Food tours are great, like food tastings, that kind of thing. And I'm on a huge kick right now of going to cooking classes. I am a terrible cook, but <laughs> cooking classes are very fun to get well, to like learn a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> the walking tour is completely, I, I'm a big, I, I'm with you on that. Everywhere I go, I go on a free walking tour because I can ask the person like who's, you know, touring as well, or touring us around. The guide is the one I'm looking for all their knowledge because they all know like the best place to not be screwed over for price. Yes. And they're they're never afraid to be a little controversial and they'll tell you where to avoid, where's the best spots, all of that. It's great. It's great. Yeah, no, for sure. That's that's one of my favorite hacks completely. And then my last <laughs> question is what's your best expat life hack? <laughs> Can I say flight tracking? Does that count as a life hack? I feel like I'm always looking for a good sale to go travel somewhere. So I feel like Wizz Air is my best friend. Skyscanner. <laughs> I always have those open on my phone at all times. Oh, I don't know if I have any other hacks. That's a tough one. Do I mean, that's you a have good a hack? one. I mean, I, I had many, but I've lost them all now from my head, which is not the spotlight on you. good podcasting. I probably said them all so people can go back and listen to them, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think my, my hack was always oh it was always trying try and make a friend before you get there. So go on the Facebook groups, talk to people, try and find someone you have in something in common with. And then when I landed in Sweden, I agreed to meet some colleagues of mine because I've been for work for dinner the first night, which meant it was a lot easier to kind of survive the first week by having someone to go for dinner with. And then we ended up going clubbing. But that's by the bar. You can have dinner. You can go to a bar. You can just, just, just not be alone. And also to help you find sheets which which aren't you know three times the price it should be. Um. We all have to learn the hard way. <laughs> exactly. 
and everyone learns from our mistakes which is the idea of the podcast yeah no that's that's the end really that was my last question so thank you for for sharing your time with me and your incredible insight into your journey abroad and all your exploits of, of travel and and you know it's great to hear that you're passing it forward by you know pioneering the, the next group of people to try and make sure they're not feeling lonely and you know supporting them which we all need um yeah and hopefully absolutely they'll pass it forward to to people when they're you know the veterans of living abroad so thank you and uh yeah i look forward to continuing our game of katam when we start playing yep. um but also <laughs> watching your travel journey because it's uh really inspiring to see all the places you go to i'm really really jealous because yeah middle east is so much easier to get to places you'll just have to join me we'll just have to start traveling together yeah. i mean if i can quit my job i would just go travel the world so yes <laughs> One day, one day. Perfect. Well, thank you. And yeah, thank you. Those remarks from yourself. I guess just thank you for your time too. It's always awesome to make these connections. I think this is my favorite part of traveling and of being a part of this travel community online is just getting to make these connections and share stories with other people. So I, I know what it feels like to feel lonely in those moments and have those challenges as an expat. So that's that's my number one goal. When there's somebody new that kind of comes into the fold, I, I want to make sure they don't have that feeling um and i also just want to get to share my travel story and encourage others to travel too so it's always a pleasure to have a chance to do that always you know that's 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 the purpose of this podcast right just to bring people close together and give that bit more sympathy not empathy because unless you've gone and done it it's difficult but understanding of of what it takes and and maybe not just the highlight reel of, of people's life abroad because it is hard but also it's a lot very rewarding because you get to you know experience a lot of cool new things like you have so thank you for for sharing that and as always if you have enjoyed the podcast you have you know given it a like uh make sure to share it with your friends who are also you know intrepid travelers and we'll see you next time for the expat pod